Hello friends, welcome to this month's In the Community special. I'm your host, Jennifer Beck. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Of course, we're talking about a different kind of inheritance than what we often think about here in earthly fashion. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to Joy Wolf, an 18-year-old young adult who is dedicating her work to the Lord. But her work is different than what most of us experience. Joy is a ninja, as in ninja warrior athletic training. You know, the obstacle courses that require climbing and swinging and jumping and reaching and leaping and a lot of muscles. But more about Joy. She was going to go to college until God redirected her focus. Here's her story. Absolutely great to have Joy. Wonderful to have you here at our studio where your mom used to work. Yes. I, actually on this set. It looked a little <laughs> different, but it was right here in the she spot did. where she, she did. did the news. But we're here to talk about you today. Joy Wolf. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for letting me come on and chat with you for a little bit. Yes, yes. Graduated from high school mm -hmm. just uh, a few weeks ago. Yep, like two weeks ago. <laughs> a lot of people your age are finishing up their summer, getting ready to get all of the dorm supplies mm -hmm. and move. Not everybody. College doesn't have to be for everybody, but that's what a lot of people are doing. And mm -hmm. that's what you thought you were going to be doing. Yep. But not. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Yes. But before we get there, there, there's a couple reasons why I invited Joy to come here. And one... Well, first of all, it's about Jesus, because you know that's what everything is here for us at TV44. But the cool thing about Joy is she is Jesus and Ninja. Jesus and Ninja. That's, I mean, I hear a lot more than that, but those are the two <laughs> elements that make you so special and unique. So let's talk about your involvement with Ninja courses. Mm -hmm. For those of you at home, you may have watched American Ninja Warrior on TV on a different channel but you have seen what a neat uh, type of thing that is. That's the kind of stuff Joy does. So let's talk about that. How did you get involved with Ninja? Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, so when I was nine years old, I had a really bad back injury from gymnastics. And up until that point, I had my heart was dead set on being a gymnast. Mm -hmm. And then I had that injury and I was told that I w wasn't able to do gymnastics anymore. So we had to find something else for me to do. and. Uh, one day my dad came home and he had seen a like flyer for a ninja gym that was really close to us and he was like, oh, you would be great, like let's go try this. And so ever since um, when I was nine years old when I stepped into the gym for the first time, I fell in love with it and that quickly became something that I looked forward to every week and open gym training was something that I always wanted to do and I was always ready to go on Friday nights when my dad would come home from work. And so, um, yeah, I fell in love with it pretty fast. Describe to our viewers what a ninja course is like, because it's different than just going to run around a track yes. or, or going to play basketball <laughs> Absolutely. or going to swim laps. So, so describe what makes it unique and very strenuous. Yeah, so with the ninja courses, you never know what you're going to get. So every competition that you go to, um, it is something completely different. It is a completely different course, different obstacles. Obviously, when you're training, you train as much as you can to be prepared for that. But when you step into a competition, it is um, X amount of obstacles in a certain order that you have to complete. And usually the rule is once you fall, you're out. So you don't get to test the course or anything like that. Um, it's first try and it's one and done. So if you don't get it the first time, then that's really unfortunate. <laughs> um, and that happens a lot, obviously, with our sport, mm -hmm. just because it is so, um, there's, so much unknown when you're going into a course. You don't really know what that course is going to look like until you get there sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's it's like in a giant adult playground. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to, to, to uh, describe it with uh, great, but you kind of have a lot of muscles to do it. I mean, yeah. it's a giant adult muscle playground. <laughs> so you started when you were nine. Mm -hmm. What was it like? I mean, that's pretty young. Yeah. So what was it that gripped you to make you realize this is this is something I'm supposed to be doing? This is for me. Yeah, so when I was 12 years old, I was actually 
um, called to compete on American Ninja Warrior Junior. So I got the call to compete on that show and after I competed on that, I came home and obviously uh, my runs did not go how I wanted them to mm -hmm. for that show. I fell pretty early and that was my first ever competition. So I had never competed before. I got there and everybody like knew each other. So wait, your and first competition was, was on, Ninja national Junior, television. on national television. Yes, huh. and I bawled my eyes out and oh. that's not how I wanted it to go. But uh, when I came home from that, I was like, this is something that I want to do. and kind of falling lit a fire under me, I guess you could say, just because I was like, okay, that's not how I wanted it to go, but I want to, um, I want to be able to compete and I want to be able to complete these courses. And this is something that I really want to do. So after I was 12 and on the show, on the junior show, then after that, that's when I really was like, okay, I want to kick this into gear. I want to compete. I want to be, um, I want to be better than I was on the show. But that says something about your character because, well, go ahead, t tell us about, if you're willing, tell us about the run. Tell us, you said yeah. it didn't go the way you wanted. Yes, so we got two runs. We were all guaranteed two runs on the show and it was a side-by-side -side course. So that means that there were, the ninja course that we were running had an identical one right next to it and we were racing the person next to us. So I had never competed before, let alone I had never raced somebody right mm. next to me. So um, just kind of a mix of those factors didn't, end up going well and the third obstacle was one that I had tried in my gym before uh, but I had never actually completed so when, the second I saw it I was like oh shoot like this isn't mm. gonna go well I don't know so I don't know what I'm doing and so I fell on that like twice both runs and in testing when we got to test obstacles before we competed so um, I was doing great through the first two obstacles. They went fine and I went right through them. I'm pr I was pretty slow um, considering I had never raced before, mm. so I didn't really know what it meant to move quickly to try to get through the course, trying to beat the person next to you. But um, the first two obstacles went great. And then I just got my first run. I made it all the way to the end of the obstacle and then I missed my last move and slipped off. And then my second run, I was just so mentally not mm. in it. My mental game was all screwed up after the fall um, in my previous run. So I went up there and I was just petrified because these obstacles are huge and falling off of it means you're falling like 10 feet in the air oh, wow. <laughs> into a giant pool of water wow. and then your clothes are soaked and that's not fun. So I was just like dangling up there and I'm like, I can't do this. And eventually my grip just gave out and I slipped and then I was pretty upset, but I had a mentor that was with us. Everybody on the show had the mentors that were on their sidelines cheering on the races and Najee Richardson it was my mentor he's somebody from the show mm -hmm. if you guys pay attention to the show mm -hmm. at all um, so he was my mentor and he like rushed right away to the side of the pool and he was like hey like he told me you're a ninja now and how awesome is that oh. and so he really picked me up and um, literally helped me out of the pool and just made it an overall a really great experience even though my run didn't end up the way I wanted it to. So that's when you were 12 mm -hmm. and a lot has happened since you were 12 that we'll talk about but where is God in it at this point? Even though you're 12 but mm -hmm. at 12 you can have a real faith with Jesus Christ yep. um, but a lot there's a lot of things happening that's still very young. You just had a huge opportunity. It mm -hmm. didn't go the way you wanted. You mm -hmm. could have said, hey, I'm going to go in high school soon. There's a lot of other sports. I think I'm going to try something else, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. How was God working at that time? The Lord was working very heavily in my life because that was actually the summer before I moved schools. So the school that I had been at up until sixth grade, I went through a lot of like verbal bullying. And so going into that season of my life with that big of a change, um, I knew once I came home, I, I literally think it was like maybe two weeks after we came mm -hmm. home that we started trying to figure out what I was going to do for school that year and where I was going to go. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord just orchestrated it all perfectly. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the ninja community that summer. Mm -hmm. And that community has been crucial in my life for the rest of my life and still is today and very much so and will be for the rest of my life. So he gave me that community and um, Little did I know that I was getting that community when I went into that. Obviously, I wasn't um, going into that thinking that I was going to make lifelong mm. friends and do this for the rest of my life, <laughs> but here we are. And so the Lord was just kind of putting all those pieces together. And like I said, that summer that I filmed, um, I came home and then I ended up switching schools and going into a different school. And all of those issues were changed and gone after that. And wow. so that was kind of how the Lord took me through that season of my life. 
Isn't that amazing how God doesn't always reveal everything, mm -hmm. but opens the door to take the steps. Yes. And once you do that, then you can see the things that are happening. Yes, Talk absolutely. a little bit more about this community, this ninja community, because I have, I watched the show many different seasons and there are specific people who, were, who would use their runs on that show as an opportunity to, to share the gospel, maybe mm -hmm. on their legs or on their yes. clothes. You would yep. see that mm -hmm. on, so, so obviously there are people with strong faith in Christ yes, in absolutely. this ninja, American Ninja Warrior community. Mm -hmm. There are so, I, I find it very interesting how many of us there are that are Christians in the ninja community. Um, and I've found that more as I've gotten to know more people and that kind of thing. But um, a lot of my very close friends are very strong in their faith as well. And that's something that I really enjoy is that not only are they ninja friends that I can compete against and train with and have a great time with just hanging out, but we can also have those deeper conversations about mm -hmm. our relationships with the Lord and what the Lord is doing in our life. And I've had um, numerous people, especially recently as I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life after graduation and all of that stuff, um, I've had a lot of really great conversations with those people. And um, Ninja gives us a great platform for us to be able to also share our faith. And I love that about it is that we are, um, we're ninjas, but we're also able to share our faith through that. And so like on the back of my shirts that I have, um, I have the joy of the Lord is my strength on the mm -hmm. back of my shirt. And that's kind of how I, um, that's been my verse, kind of my main verse for um, Ninja and just kind of everything that I do with that is I want to make sure that people are aware that like that is a huge part of my life and um, it's really fun to be able to take Ninja and kind of make it our own ministry because it's something unique and it's something different and um, I just love that Ninja can be a ministry and anything can be a ministry if you want it to be. And you've been involved with a Zoom Bible study with, yes. with people in the Ninja community, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, on Sunday nights we have a Ninja Bible study that's on Zoom and so because we are all so spread out around the country, um, we are all able to meet on Zoom on that on Sunday nights, and it's a great community of people that are just there to learn the word and grow in their faith and be encouraged by um, the people that speak and the people that pour into us through that Zoom. So, so let's talk about how you really got into that community because mm -hmm. you went into high school, so you went to Leo High School. Mm -hmm. That was where you transferred to, just graduated, uh, you know, 2024 grad. Yep. Um, but obviously you didn't just jump in the community. You were, it took time, I am mm -hmm. sure. Yes. High school, I am guessing, looked a little different for you than it did for a lot of other high schoolers. Yeah. How did that community build? What was your life like in those four years? Yeah, so the best part about Ninja, like I've said, is the community. And so I had more friends in the Ninja community than I necessarily did at school, at least deep friendships. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was always... I would come home and I'm always on FaceTime with one of my friends or texting them throughout the day, um, giving them a call whenever I have the chance. And so a lot of that is long distance friendships, which is obviously different than um, being able to like, just call up your friend and be like, hey, you wanna go to Starbucks? <laughs> like, now is that because you're tra you were traveling to go to, I mean, how did you really yes. form those friendships? Mm -hmm. Were you traveling to competitions? Tell us what your high school life was like. Yeah, so I would go during the weekends, I would go and compete. I wouldn't compete every weekend necessarily, but the majority of the weekends I would be somewhere competing and um, so I would meet my friends there and then we would be competing together and there's various different competitions and depending on where you're at there's different groups of people at each competition and that kind of thing so um, during my senior year I actually got to travel a lot more mm -hmm. and um, I think I did the math and it was like I was in nine different states I think during my senior year mm -hmm. and of those nine states I believe I visited five of them twice so I was all over the place <laughs> during my senior year and so I was in and out a lot um, I was Obviously, I was trying to work my schedule around school. I'm not trying to miss as much school mm -hmm. as possible, um, but I was able to take those trips and really deepen those friendships, especially this year, um, just being able to travel and go stay with them and for training or competing or whatever I'm doing, um, just being able to really build those friendships through that time that I'm spending with them. And God really used one of those trips specifically to help guide your future, didn't mm -hmm. he? Yes. Because you were planning to go to college. Yes. You were planning to even stay local mm -hmm. at home with your family, which they <laughs> probably would have loved. Right. But I'm speaking in the past tense because one of those trips, God used one of your ninja friends mm -hmm. to talk with you and to really seek out what he had for your life. 
Yeah, so in January, I went out to Massachusetts for some training and just to, you know, hang out with one of my friends down there. And one of my friends that lives out there, her name's Taylor. She's been on the adult show. And so she is, she's awesome. She's one of somebody who is like a big sister to me, kind of. Mm -hmm. And so um, she and I were just talking about the future because I was staying with her. So um, we were talking about college and all that stuff. And she's one of those people that kind of like says it as it is. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I explained to her that I wanted to do ninja for the rest of my life, but I felt like I just was supposed to go to college because that's what I was supposed to mm -hmm. do. Um, she kind of looked at me and was like, what are you going go to go to college for if you don't really like need to be there kind of thing and that kind of made me take a step back and reevaluate of like okay so this is going to college going to like community college is something that I had planned on for most of my life and like you said I'm really close to my parents and my family so moving away was something that I wouldn't even consider for most mm -hmm. of my life um, and so after those conversations then I kind of began to pray about it and bring it to the Lord and I was like okay Lord where do you want me like is this, is college where you want me? Do you want me somewhere else? What is this going to look like? Um, and from the beginning of the year, I knew that I was called into full-time ninja, but I had no idea what that was going to look like. And I was just like, okay, like, I know that's where I'm going to be, but I have no idea how it's going to work out. And so throughout the year and throughout different um, processes, I was able to figure out that I wanted to spend my time learning more about Ninja. So um, through that conversation with Taylor in Massachusetts, that's how um, it kind of came about that I wanted to spend the next year traveling and working at different Ninja gyms across the country and being able to learn everything I can about coaching and competing and running a gym eventually if that's something that I want to do down the road. So uh, that's kind of how that shifted. And I kind of realized that I was like, oh, okay, this is this is where I want to go and this is how the Lord wants me to do it. And he opened doors left and right and he wow. absolutely had his hand on it the whole time and provided me with this opportunity. And so. that's the neat thing. When mm -hmm. you hear from what God, you act on it, you say yes, and then you start to see the open doors. Mm -hmm. What does it look like to be a full-time what does it mean? I'm going to go full time into Ninja. That's, you know, that's not a job description that we see very often in our yep. area. So, so what does that look like? Yeah. So I'm going to be spending the next year, like I said, traveling and um, working at different Ninja gyms. So I will be in two weeks, I will be moving out to Massachusetts for the rest of the summer. And I will be coaching with one of my living and coaching with one of my best friends out there. She and I will be working in her backyard. Actually, she has a big wow. ninja rig. And so she and I will be working out there. Um, and then I will come home and in August, I will move down to St. Louis. And there's a big group of people down there that I met through a trip, uh, actually just a couple weeks ago. Um, and so I'm gonna be moving down there with them and training with them and working with them until December. And then in January, I'm gonna be moving to Florida and I will be working at another ninja gym in Florida. I'll be coaching there and uh, training with those people. And my best friend lives in Florida, so I get to go hang out with her a lot, which is really exciting. And um, I'll be there until about May-ish and then I will come home as of right now, that's the plan, unless the Lord takes me somewhere else. I'm mm. planning on being back next summer, so. So I'm gonna guess, are you 18? Yes. 18 right now. So yep. you were nine years old when you mm -hmm. went into your first Ninja Gym. What, did, what comes to your mind when you think about the fact that half of your life ago, at <laughs> age nine, a little girl, a skinny little girl, yep. um, <laughs> Yeah, because you're you're strong. I mean, I, there's, she's got she's got muscles right here. You know, but we know how it all starts. Um, think back to that and think back then. God knew mm -hmm. what was going to happen mm -hmm. and was orchestrating everything. Yeah, what comes to your mind when you think about that? I just get. I honestly, it's a little overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. thinking about how the Lord has truly been in this story since the beginning of it and he's been writing out every single little detail um, from knowing that my dad was going to run into that flyer at wherever he was mm -hmm. when he found that to leading me into the gym and then from the gym going on to the show and then from the show going into coaching and working at the gym and then going from just a volunteer coach to head coach at the gym and then being able to meet all of my friends and make these connections. It's crazy to take a step back and see how the Lord has put those pieces into place since day one. And you know, as we talk, it can be easy to think, oh, it was just smooth, so easy. You <laughs> did it, you moved on, you did everything. But you know, sometimes, when, not sometimes, always pretty much. When God mm -hmm. calls us to something, that doesn't mean it's just, there's, 
moments of fear mm -hmm. or there's moments of question. Mm -hmm. Were there ever times along this whole path that you had to remind yourself, I'm going to keep going, or I don't know if this is the right thing? Mm -hmm. Or did you ever have any of those times? How did you get past them if you did? Yeah, so going into this next year, my plan was, I had a plan out of where I was going to be and what I was, what gyms I was going to be at when. Um, and recently I actually had something kind of fall out with one of the places that I was supposed to be. And so that was kind of a moment of, I was like, okay, Lord, I thought, I thought this is what you wanted. And I thought this is where we were going to go. And um, through a lot of conversation with some really close friends and trusted mentors in my life, um, we kind of realized that it was a blessing in disguise and that was just not where the Lord was calling me at the mm -hmm. moment. And um, there were a lot of different factors that kind of played into that realization. But once I came to that realization, then I realized that the Lord had put this new group of people in my life and that was the St. Louis group. And so that's mm -hmm. who I'm going to be living with now. Um, and it's definitely scary when you think you have it all planned out and you're like, all right, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. This is cool. Fantastic. And then something shakes a little bit, but the Lord obviously has had his hand on it the entire time and was with me every step of the way. And when one door closed, he immediately opened another. And I didn't even know it when I was at the competition that I met everybody at, that I was making that connection for that reason. And then in, within a week, I was like, okay, I guess I'm moving in with you guys. And they are some pretty incredible people. So I am very, very excited to be living with them for the next couple of months. That is great. <laughs> you know, I keep hearing you talk about the Lord, which is awesome. And I heard you use the word calling, which is also awesome. But I know that you're not gonna walk into your ninja training every day and just do a Bible study. Right. Because you're training people. <laughs> so. As people who are watching are in different types of lines of work or just in their daily lives, how can you do that? How, what are, I mean, when you go into this, you'll be teaching ninja, but yet you'll be representing Christ. Mm -hmm. Is that in your mind? And yes. how do you walk through that in life? Yeah, absolutely. So my job is a ninja coach. So I'm working with kids as young as two years old, all the way up, no matter how old they are, adults come in and I also train with them and work with them. So I, especially with the kids, I love kids so mm -hmm. much. I have, I very much have a heart for kids. So um, whenever I'm there, I just realize that I have no idea where they're coming from. I have no idea what their home, home life or home situation is like. And so when they come in, if I can be an hour of happiness and joy and peace for them, then my job is done. And if they see the see the Lord in me, then that is, that's what I'm there for. That's mm -hmm. what, um, what I'm trying to kind of also give them while I'm also obviously teaching them about ninja and coaching them, teaching them how to do obstacles. But like I said, if I can be one hour that they look forward to, no matter what they're going through, um, I've had kids come in who have been bullied at school and mm -hmm. I've had kids come in who are just tired from the day and just having a rough day. Maybe they had an issue at home or something. They come in and um, if I can, you know, turn their frown upside down by the time they leave my class, then I have done my job and um, I just love all of them. I always refer to them as my kids. Mm -hmm. I love them like my own kids, even <laughs> though I'm only 18 and I, obviously I don't have any kids. Um, I always call them my kids because I love each and every one of them and I love the connection that I get to make with them. That's awesome. <laughs> That is great. That is great. So you're getting ready to go. In fact, by the time this airs, I think you'll actually will be gone. This will air yes. in July. You yep. will already be gone. What will, will you be, be. doing um, when you get started? You will be to the backyard, the backyard gym, mm -hmm. which is the cool thing about Ninja. I mean, yeah, you see these neat setups that people create. Um, what, what, I guess, what will be the first step to this next step of your life? Yeah, so like I said, in two weeks, I'm going to be moving out to Massachusetts and I will be coaching. Obviously, it'll be a different group of kids um, because I'm not here. It's wherever the kids are mm -hmm. locally. And so we will be working some summer camps and just running some classes out of her backyard and obviously training. We'll be able to do our own training at another gym and that kind of thing. So it'll be a whole lot of ninja. And I'm very excited because my life has been go, 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 go for the last year probably has not stopped and so I'm very excited to kind of just be able to move out there and she lives on a lake so we'll get to hang out oh, and rough yes Typical. Man. <laughs> so it'll that be, was sarcastic by the way <laughs> um so it'll be a lot slower pace of life um mm. and I'm very excited for that to be able to just kind of narrow in on what I know I love to do and spend all of my time in ninja and get to do that for as long as I can so 
All right, we're just about out of time. I just have one final question. Um, you talked about being bullied. You moved to another school. Uh, you talked about how your network out of high school was maybe even more than your network in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, none of us are cut from the same mold, mm -hmm. and it can be very difficult at times to feel unique. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, encouragement could you give a viewer, maybe a young viewer, who's just saying, I think that's me, you know, I, I'm not feeling like I fit in, but I know God has something mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, I think that feeling of you don't quite fit in, and when you find that out early, it's definitely hard because you, as a young kid, you're like, okay, why, why is all this happening? Why do I not fit in? Why don't I, why don't I have this friend group? Why don't I have these friends? Why is this happening? This, that, and the other thing. And I think that is a sign early on that the Lord has some big plan, mm -hmm. big plans for your life. And um, even if you're not going through that, I mean, the Lord has huge things that he has in store for you. And so um, just pressing into the Lord as hard as you can and finding people like for me, when I was younger, my mom and I had so many conversations mm -hmm. about the bullying and things like that and um, finding somebody that like that whether that's a friend or like an older sibling or a parent um, just finding somebody who can encourage you and keep you going through that time um, and remind you that um, remind you of your worth and remind mm -hmm. you that the Lord has plans for you and that the Lord is absolutely writing your story mm -hmm. and things like that. Awesome. Joy Wolf, thank you so <laughs> much. We will enjoy following your next paths and seeing all the things that you're doing. And thanks so much for coming to Lima to do this interview. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting me come on and hang out with you guys for a little bit. So excellent. Thank <laughs> you. You can keep up with Joy's Ninja Adventures by following her Facebook page or her YouTube channel or her Instagram account or anything. She's all over social media. They all have the same title, Ninja Joy Wolf. Now, I chose to interview Joy because she's a young person who is passionate about living for Jesus Christ. I know that many of you viewers have justifiable concerns about the shifting morals influencing our next generation, but let's join together to commit for praying for this next generation, that God would have a great impact on young adult leaders like Joy who desire to live for Jesus. Well, that's all the time we have for this month's In the Community special. Before we go, I want to reiterate our verse, Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Remember that if you're in a tough work situation or something that's difficult, remember who you serve. We serve the one true, never changing, living God. Well, thanks for joining us. Also, thank you for your continued financial support this month and all summer. We certainly do appreciate you. Thanks again for watching this episode of In the Community.